In this lesson, I'm going to show you very quickly how you can get Miniconda and PyCharm running on your system. I'll demonstrate this on MacOS, and uh, that should be more or less the same as Linux. And I'll uh, most probably make another video to show how to do that on Windows also, but it should be more or less parallel. Okay, so we've chosen Miniconda because that is a, a very good mix of um, scientific Python based packages that we need for for all kinds of um, analytical programming and computational and data science programming um, and also because it allows us um, to build uh, separate uh, Python environments very quickly on our system if we want to experiment with new packages or if we need to work on separate client projects well uh, let's start by going to the Miniconda website you can find that by just googling Miniconda this will take you to conda.io slash Miniconda and on there uh, I'm on Mac in this case, and I choose the 64-bit bash installer uh, for Python 3.6. Right, you can install other versions of Python within this Miniconda, but that's just the base version. So let's download that quickly, and there it goes. Okay, so now we have that downloaded. Let's just find our terminal over here. And we go in the download directory, and there we see is uh, the Miniconda package. The easiest way to run this downloaded archive is just to invoke bash on it, like this. Um, and then it will ask me a few questions. First, I have to read or at least acknowledge this license by pressing space and going through it. And then, and then typing, yes, I do accept this license. At which point it will suggest using the default directory of Miniconda 3 in my home directory. I just press enter and then it will uh, continue the installation. Give it a few moments to do so. It's installing a few basic packages and configuring them and getting my whole Minicon installation ready. So now comes the tricky bit. It's asking me if it uh, if uh, I want it to prepend the Miniconda 3 install location to my path with the default yes. And in fact, in this case, I want to say no due to a recent change in Miniconda. I'll tell you why. Uh, if we had added that to our path, running Python would have gotten us the Miniconda Python instead of the Mac, in this case, system Python or the Linux system Python. There's now a better way to, um, to configure this. And it's actually explained in their FAQ, frequently asked questions. I hope that they will soon update their documentation. But in short, instead of adding the whole of the conda bin to your path, we only have to source one of their shell scripts. And the best place to do so is in the bash RC or the bash profile or whatever you know shell uh, profile uh, that you use. So let's do that. Go to Emacs, which is my preferred editor. We won't be seeing too much of this because we will be using PyCharm. So what I do is I've just narrowed my, my bash RC. There's more in here, but just to show you what happens, um, I've added this line, so that's dot space, and then the miniconda3 directory, etc, profile.d, and conda.sh. Okay, so when I do that, uh, I will have to exit my terminal and then create a new one. And in this new terminal, I will now suddenly have access to the conda command, which is exactly what I want, except, my system Python is left untouched, which is also what I want. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our very first test environment. So let's do conda create, which is uh, conda speak for creating an environment. And what this environment is, it's within a conda, or within mini conda, anaconda, uh, you can have multiple independent Python environments. And each Python environment can be configured with a different version of Python and different versions of all of the various different libraries. So in this way, I can construct the necessary dependencies, put them together for each and every project that I'm that I'm working on. This is terribly convenient, and it also leaves my system Python untouched, which is a, a big a big bonus. Okay, so I do kind of create. Let's call it, um, for example, in this case, VXU1. That's just our first environment, and super importantly, I definitely need to uh, also include Python with the environment. If I did, don't do that, it will create an environment because Conda actually also supports creating um, environments with uh, a list of other libraries in there, but no Python. So let's just tell it 3.6 for now. At this very moment, we could have um, installed Python 3.7. 
Um, and we will very shortly start doing that, but many of the libraries are still catching up. So at this point, it's safer to use Python 3.6. Uh, it'll be uh, very easy to upgrade later. We can also easily use some of the more interesting features of Python 3.7 in 3.6, such as data classes, by using the officially sanctioned data classes backboard. Okay, so let's just create that environment. It takes a while, it's actually running a, a, a real dependency solver. So it has to traverse the whole tree of dependencies and figure out what the best uh, configuration will be of all the various the versions that are required uh, in, in this uh, dependency tree by all the different packages that uh, are dependent upon by Python 3.6. And this gets more and more complicated the more packages that I need. But usually the solver is able to resolve this for us and then uh, configure the environment. It helpfully ends there with uh, what I need to be able to activate that environment. And wh why I want to do that is usually the default Python is my system Python. But when I activate my new environment by going conda activate vxu1, two things happen, at least two, actually many more. The one that you can see here is that the prompt changes. It says uh, vxu1 so that I know this is now the active environment. And if I ask the shell which Python now would load, it tells me very helpfully, well, actually the VXU1 Python is going to load. And this can be a, a completely different version from uh, my system. So now if I run Python, that's the, the Python prompt. And as you m m might know or not know, but this is a REPL right here and I can start typing Python commands in there. Uh, exit to exit to the, to the command line or in Linux and Mac OS, you can also just uh, press Control D. Okay, so now the final piece of our puzzle, or at least of these basic requirements that we are going to use, um, uh, or that you will need to follow uh, uh, these short, uh, very short courses, these short snippets, uh, is PyCharm. So I've already uh, pre-installed PyCharm. Um, I uh, pay for a PyCharm license, but in this specific case. Uh, you can also opt to use PyCharm Community or any other ID of your choice. I recommend PyCharm because it's a, 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 they've hit the sweet spot uh, in combining ease of use with flexibility and power. So um, if you are not a, a licensed user, Community has almost all of the features in any case that we require for these courses. And it is even explicitly allowed to use this in a commercial setting. Okay, so I have fortunately already installed that. I will just invoke it from my uh, PyCharm toolbox. It takes a short while to start up. There we go. So they have PyCharm Community 2018.2. Okay, so let's create our first project. This is the fun part. So let's say create project. And then um, I have most of my work projects I have in my Dropbox but you might choose to put it in your documents. For example, I can give the same name as the environment. I can call it well, anything I want. In fact, it's a directory that will contain all of my, uh, my eventually also my Python packages and uh, my Python package spec. But for now, we're gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna create uh, that directory and put our Python in there. Now, the very important bit is that I have to choose the interpreter from that virtual environment that I just installed. Let's see, it doesn't know about it yet. So let's tell it about my Conda environment, which it fortunately knows about. And then uh, I will need to help it a little bit. Uh, so there, um, I will take it to mini Conda 3. You can use the file browser. Uh, I know where it is. I'm just gonna type slash ems and then within ems, I just have to type the name of the environment. And then within that, the bin directory, and then I usually select Python 3 explicitly to remind me that this is a Python 3 project. But you could just have used Python because that is by default in this case, Python 3.6, which you installed. So I do that. So now I've selected that interpreter, I press okay here. And now I have this um, project over here and I've already linked it to this new Python virtual environment that I've created. And now I can click on the create button and here, I now have a fully configured Python project, which is amazing. So let us just uh, create a new file. And let's call this um, hello world.py for now. We'll be doing more complicated things later on. So I can do exactly the same uh, here. Let's 
to see if I can. Oh, this might take a while. That's right, I hope that's visible. So now I can do exactly the same here and say print hello world. And then a shortcut is I can just right click on this file over here and I should be able to say run hello world, in which case it will automatically create a run configuration for me here. So henceforth, I can just type shift 10. So let's say I change my code, I save and then I press shift F10 and then it will rerun my code down here. So now I have debugging going. Uh, I have, I can run it from the IDE and I will of course get all of PyCharm's considerable help. Oops, this is a standard Python convention. So why I do this is so that if this Python is invoked as a script, in other words, I run it, it will then actually run that main method. But if another Python file were to import it, import the script to use it as a, as a module, as library code, then it would not run main by default. And the calling code would have the option of running main or not. Okay, so I think that concludes uh, this very short uh, lesson. You should now have Miniconda running on your system. You'll be able to create an arbitrary number of new environments and you're also able to uh, create uh, projects with PyCharm and you're able to associate a project with the virtual environment, meaning that it will run within that environment um, and you can now start playing with Python. Thank you very much.